Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I really hope you're all doing well. Today I am back with a different video than usual, but before we start, I just want to say thank you very much for the response on my giveaway video. I had a lot of people that, you know, um, joined the giveaway I held on my YouTube channel for the first time. And last week I actually announced the winner and I figured that somehow um, not everyone did um, realize that I announced it but actually I posted uh, a post on my YouTube feed and you know I just announced the winner and uh, she reached out to me and I'm very very happy you know to ship her the item and I can't wait for her actually to get it so I will put down below again in the description box um, the name of the winner. So for, for those of you that didn't uh, realize, you know, or missed my post. Um, but again, thank you so, so much for participating. And um, I will definitely do some other giveaways in the future. I really enjoyed this one. So yeah. Um, let's move on now to the video. Um, you know, I thought I'd just do something different. I was thinking about doing this type of video for a long time. Um, in case you see me looking down, I'm just looking at my mobile phone because I'm listing here 10 of the designer handbags I considered purchasing, but I'm glad I didn't. I either purchased this handbag and I sent it back, or I'm just happy that time passed by and I got over it so yeah this is more or less the topic I'm gonna cover today and if you are interested then just keep on watching. The first handbag or designer handbag I ever considered you know to buy it is the Stella McCartney Falabella Tote. This handbag I have actually no idea when this was released it must have been years ago and I remember it was very, very huge on YouTube. Um, I'm sure it's still very huge and popular in the community that really, really likes uh, Stella McCartney. And I don't know, I was hooked somehow by them. You know, um, there were so many reviews and the handbag looked like to be casual and stylish at the same time. It was absolutely an in-bag back then. Also, because it's not real leather, it actually made, it is made out of 100% polyester. So it's basically a vegan handbag. And that was also one of the subject why the bag was so popular. So I considered to, to buy this handbag back then in black and with their, you know, this, this silver chain uh, around the handbag. I, I really liked the way you know, it looked and the way you could style it, you basically had, I believe you had two ways how to wear it, uh, basically either flipped on or flipped down, you know, you have the, the upper part, you could flip down and so you had two looks basically uh, out of one handbag. So I, um, again, I would have bought it in the uh, black probably and with the diamond chain, you know, the signature diamond chain. Um, but if I look back, I'm actually very happy I didn't because it's actually not my style, not my style, not at all. So I am absolutely over this handbag. I actually never bought it and or sent it back. You know, I actually even didn't try it in any stores. It was just something I, you know, um, found out through YouTube and I had it on my wish list, but I never really bought this handbag. and. Again, there are not big reasons why I didn't. The main reason clearly is that it's not my style of handbag and I would have been so very fast or you know over it that probably purchase purchase this handbag would have been would have not been worth it. The second handbag I am glad I didn't buy is the Balenciaga City Bag. And also here we have an iconic classic handbags in the luxury industry. And I'm sure it's still very, very big uh, to this day. Um, it was so, so uh, a popular bag on YouTube. Um, let's say six, seven years ago, it seemed like everybody had it. There was this um, classic version, that's the city size. I'm actually not even into Balenciaga at all. They released 
few years later they release like a mini size of this particular handbag style or a nano size um, which I actually would have enjoyed much more so I'm very glad I didn't got the city because but probably I would have regretted to not have purchased the other version the smaller one but back then mini handbags wasn't or weren't as popular as today so um, here again the simply reason is that in my opinion, as popular as they are, as long as you are in a possession, they don't hold their resale value very well. Um, I really hope I can explain myself. Uh, so basically, if you have it in, in your collection and you love it, then absolutely, it's an absolutely beautiful handbag, very popular and iconic. But if you think about to resell it, or if you thought you are going to invest in this handbag then probably it would have it would have not been a wise decision because because in my opinion it's not an investment handbag so in my case again i love the bag from afar but um and i also tried it a few times uh, when i went shopping but whenever i um was trying the handbag i could not afford it because maybe i had the money put aside for something else or I didn't have the money at all so I kind of always had to pass it but today I'm happy this happened actually but again a very very beautiful popular handbag just not for me the third handbag is the Prada Sofiano Tote also here a very iconic uh, handbag by Prada um, very very luxe and very very bossy and I don't see myself being you know a bossy I like to be stylish sometimes I like to be elegant classy but the past few years I definitely was more casual slash sporty than classy so this handbag would have been on my shelf for the past years um, it's a very nice handbag Mm, I, you actually can get this handbag even on in some outlet stores so even though it's a pricey handbag you can get some some um, either discounts on other sites or you can find Prada in an outlet mall where the you know Safiano Lux or yeah the Lux Toad is actually even discounted so um, I guess it's sometimes even an affordable handbag very beautiful also here they brought it in two different versions um, or maybe I think it's, it was they had two similar version so um, it's a very boxy handbag very very luxe very bossy and it's not it's, it doesn't suit me you know maybe there was a time where I thought it suits me and maybe I was just influenced by so so many people on YouTube that purchased this handbag and that revealed it and reviewed it and I really really liked it I really enjoyed all the reviews and I, I remember I was scrolling up and down and see if I can find the perfect uh, Luxtoad, the Prada Luxtoad that could suit my style but um, if I have to think back I'm very very glad I didn't buy it because it wouldn't just suit me absolutely not it's a very very boxy style mm and they're very bossy I mean I know I'm repetitive but that's just the adjectives I can you know think of um, a similar handbag you know if I think about it the Chanel GSD the Grand Shopping Tote I used to have this handbag and I really loved it but I sold it within the same year or let's say within the 12 months I already sold that bag why because it was way too boxy you know big and boxy and the way it looked on me it just didn't you know suit me it was i was maybe way too sporty and casual for such a beautiful classy handbag so that's why i think the prada luxtote wouldn't have been a, a great investment for me but again a very beautiful iconic handbag and please do not feel offended if you have this handbag because i would um you know i'm very happy for everyone that enjoys their handbag it's just not nothing you know it's just not the bag that suits my personal style maybe that will change in the future maybe that was in the past but as of now it's just not a handbag i would have loved or enjoyed to have in my collection that's all the next handbag is a also one of the iconic handbag and still to this day a very popular handbag and it's the Givenchy Antigona 
And what shall I say, guys? Um, I, I went back and forth with with this with the choice of this handbag. I uh, actually bought it once a few years ago, and I bought the medium size because they used to have a small size and the medium, and now they even have a nano, which I personally like the most. Or maybe I would go with the small and or the nano. Um, but back then I ordered the medium size. Why? Because it was cheaper. Don't ask me why. Probably because of the leather structure, the leather choice. It was definitely cheaper than the smaller, maybe less popular. Um, so I bought this handbag. I received it from Neta Porté. And I was absolutely disappointed. I was so disappointed the way this handbag was made. Um, the interior was just cotton, but it wasn't nice stitched on the handbag. I felt like it's a, I don't even, I don't want to even say cheap handbag because I enjoy as well non-luxury um, low street handbag or low fashion street handbag or high fashion street bag. I really, no matter, you know, a handbag for me doesn't need to have a name or a brand. Um, as long as it's well made, I really enjoy it. But that particular one that I ordered wasn't in my opinion well made i it, it was you know it, i was really mad at it actually i was like why the heck is such a beautiful designer handbag not made or not reaching my expectation again as mentioned the leather was the smooth one actually a bad choice for me i should have gone with a puppet leather but at the time there was just this one for that discounted price that was my budget and the interior again it was cotton i don't mind having cotton interior but it wasn't but it wasn't a luxurious cotton lining at least not you know for my feeling so the money i spent on this handbag was absolutely not worth it also the size in the end was way too big for me and i don't know it just didn't convince me so i sent it back right away after one day i sent it back and i just closed that chapter i just closed it i never thought about it it was off my wish list and i never ever considered it again until they came out with the, with the nano size and um i sometimes go back and think if the nano would switch my you know my style um or maybe the small in the puppet leather but again, the way it is structured, you know, the handle that stay just stiff like this and, and the zipper is not as smooth. That's just my impression. It's not as smooth. And then you have, you know, the, the back probably, it doesn't open, it's not flexible enough, you know. So I feel like it's very structured and it wouldn't be a back or this type of structure in this handbag would be something I would enjoy long term. So that's why I'm actually very glad I didn't buy it. The next bag I highly considered, but highly considered to buy, was the Chanel boy bag. My goodness, this handbag was such a hype a few years ago, and still it is. Not as much, to be honest. We don't talk as much anymore about the Chanel boy bag. Um, I guess we went all back to their classics um, or the new releases. So the Chanel somehow is suffering a little bit of popularity, even though, you know, it's a great bag. It's a um, an iconic bag for, for Chanel, but it's, you know, I think it lost a little bit of popularity. I think m the majority of the people, um, either that because they have it or they have enough of this handbag, um, they, they got just maybe sick about it. I don't know. But for me, it's just, I really highly consider this handbag. I went back to Chanel several times I you know tried it on several times in any color you could you could think of um, I really liked it either in black um, just because it goes with every single you know um, style or I really liked it as well in a grayish slash a topish type of color um, to be honest I don't know I was maybe and again I'm very glad I didn't buy it because I would have been probably blind I would have gone with the with the trend that you know um, was back then. Everybody had a Chanel boy bag. Uh, everybody wanted a Chanel uh, boy bag, so I wanted wanted it too. Um, again, the interior is so tiny. In the end, you don't have like that much space for a bag that outside it looks bigger than it is. And I think today, if I just think back, I am very glad because 
I would have spent a lot of money for something I probably wouldn't have enjoyed. And the, the corner, they're so sharp, you can, you know, um, you can damage them so fast. And to be honest, the resale value isn't as good as I thought or wished. And that's just the real thing. Um, this is what I am actually observing. If I go back to the second hand market, especially here in Switzerland or Europe, a Chanel boy bag isn't uh, worth at all. The, the prices are, are decreasing so much. I mean, you pay for such a beautiful handbag and if you try to resell it, um, it's, it's, you wouldn't get the money you, you would wish. I mean, at least this is what I, again, here I'm observing. So I'm very glad because I know if I would have bought this handbag, I probably would have enjoyed it, yes, because I was very hooked and very addicted to this particular handbag and it was so expensive, I just couldn't afford it. I knew for the amount, um, I for the amount of this handbag, I could have, I've, I could have gone and buy three other handbags, which I actually did. In the end, I invested the money in two or three other handbags, maybe in shoes. I had more items actually. But maybe just to highlight, I probably would have um, enjoyed the handbag. But as of now, I would have resold it and I would have sold it and I'm sure I, I would have not got the money back. It was just, I don't know, it would, would have been a bad. Um, a bad purchase slash sale. This is just what I think. I I'm not quite sure, guys. What do you think? Please let me know, because I'm so curious, you know, to know what you guys think. I know it's very, very popular and a very um, iconic handbag, but I'm over it. I don't know about you guys. I'm just over it. I again, it's it's a handbag I really enjoy, f you know, from the far. But I don't really need it in my collection, absolutely not. The next handbag is the Goyard tote bag. Um, I believe it's called Goyard tote. It's the Goyard Sanui tote, I'm sorry. So this is also very, very similar to the Neverfull, also a very iconic handbag by Goyard. And um, you know, it's a beautiful tote and it was also very, very popular. It still probably is, but um, after watching all the reviews and also see seeing how the you know the resale value is very very bad and how they hold the handbag itself is holding so badly actually because because even though it's made out of canvas I think or I believe the canvas is, is much thinner than the Louis Vuitton canvas I believe if you compare the Neverfull by Louis Vuitton and the Saint Louis by Goyard you can tell it's much thinner and the the look the appearance of the handbag to me it looks like plastic maybe because this canvas has this shiny uh, i don't know it's co coated with this shine i don't know it's just it's just so shiny that it to me it looks plastic and um absolutely not not a handbag i would enjoy to this day so i'm very happy i didn't buy it Absolutely, because I'm so, so happy with the Neverfoods I actually have in my collection. The next handbag is the Fendi Picapoo, also very, very known and popular um, out, you know, in the luxury industry. Um, beautiful, iconic handbag. Again, I was so addicted. Everybody had it. So many reviews. I think Mel Soldera was one of the YouTubers I've seen it first. And she had it, and she had even two, if I'm not mistaken, um, a, a, one in a camel, one in a beautiful gray um, color, very beautiful. Again, there are different sizes. I would have considered the smaller one, um, just because I'm into smaller bags. But also here, um, I be, probably because I was, and I'm still considering to get the Louis Vuitton Capucine BB, probably because I have that handbag in on my wish list, and they would have been way too similar from the style. I think you know I would have not enjoyed. I do have in my collection also similar handbags, 
you know, from the style perspective, but they are not that pricey. So then here, I think it's okay. But a Fanny Picaboo and a, it's super expensive, right? And the Louis Vuitton Capucine Bebe is even more expensive. So I would rather save that money towards, you know, um, and investing than towards the Capucine Bebe, definitely. So again, it was one of the handbags I highly considered. Nothing very bad to say about it. I still, uh, you know, enjoy the handbag. It looks very classy, very, very beautiful, but I'm over it, the whole thing. I don't feel like it's something I would like to have, you know, in my handbag collection. The next handbag is the um, Loewe Puzzle Bag, I believe it's called. And also here, very popular handbag two, three years ago. It seemed like everybody had it on YouTube, um, especially bloggers, I would say. So that um, brings me to the probably idea that bloggers have been gifted this handbag by Lueve to make, make it popular and, you know, bring it out there. Um, I was also very influenced by all those bloggers and YouTubers that had it. Either they picked it by themselves or they got it gifted. Whatever the reason was why they showed the handbag. I admit I was very hooked and I went a few times and you know tried it on it, it was the size was perfect the look was also very very nice but in the end I was just waiting to you know accumulate the money in order to get it and I'm just happy I didn't buy it I'm just so happy because I am absolutely over this handbag it's not up up to my alley it's not it doesn't suit my style. I see this handbag very much um, on bloggers because it's a typical blogger handbag. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes there are handbags that are typically made for bloggers and it's just very, very nice the way they um, take pictures outside. I think this is a beautiful bag that um, is very, um, very, very photogenic handbag and it really, really looks nice, you know, on all those bloggers and on pictures. But no, no, no. I'm really happy I didn't got this handbag and i actually rather save the money for something else. Yeah, if I would have bought it, then I would have gone with a camel color, something very, very warm I could use in um, summer and fall periods. The next handbag I highly considered as well is the Chloe Nile bag. My goodness, you guys know for those of you that follow me for a while, you guys know how much I love my Chloe handbags. I have two. I have the Chloe Drew and then I have the Chloe Fee in a backpack version. Absolutely love Chloe. Uh, I know their their handbags or Chloe Chloe's handbags are not holding their value. I know that unless. Um, the handbag is very, very popular during that time. But Chloe handbags are not handbags I'm investing. It's just something I really, really enjoy buying it. It's, it's, I really like their craftsmanship. I like the style. I like the smell. I like everything about Chloe handbags. So I could see myself going forward, you know, I could see myself buying other Chloe handbags. The Nile one would have been one of my, um, handbag of choice. Clearly I had that handbag, wow, for a while on my wish list and um, I really, really liked it. Nevertheless, again here, um, time flies by very fast. The style changes, the trend changes and I'm over it. But I'm not over the handbags I still have in my collection. So I don't, I'm not over the Drew, I'm not over the Faye. But the Nile, I don't know, I've seen it a few times in the store. It's so small. It's so tiny. You, you can't barely fit a mobile phone in it. I don't know. You can just fit two things in it. And that's it. And, and I feel like it wasn't as um, flexible enough. It was very, very structured in, in that style, in that way. In, you know, very structured. So I would have been over it and uh, I would have sold it. But, uh, but the, 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 you know, it doesn't help, again, as mentioned, Chloe is not really holding its value. So also here with the Nile, I would have lost 
a lot of money probably because I would have sold it, sell it, sell it or sold it. I would have sold it. Yes, I would have sold it. So I would have lost a lot of money and um, just not worth it for me. I would have got, I would not got the cost per word, you know, I, I don't know. Too tiny and uh, I'm glad I did not uh, buy this handbag and I'm glad I didn't go with the trend back then. And lastly, to close this whole chapter, um, I'm very glad I didn't buy the Dior Book Tote. Beautiful handbag from the far, in my opinion, is also here a handbag that is very much influenced by bloggers. Um, very photogenic, you know, when I see the handbag uh, on any bloggers that take pictures, you know, very, very beautiful. Also the way they style themselves when they travel, they have their beautiful luggage and then they have this Dior book tote, you know, it looks so stylish. It's a very nice travel handbag and I'm absolutely happy if you got this handbag and you had, if you had a budget for it, I'm just very glad that I didn't buy it and I did not went with the trend. Um, as mentioned again, a very nice photogenic handbag, looks very good on bloggers. It was also one of the handbag that it was basically gifted to all bloggers and I don't know, YouTubers that have a bigger audience. I kind of was hooked, but then I was, very fast here it went fast it was, actually this bag never made it to my wish list i considered it from you know like from the far i kind of considered it when i saw it first time i thought yes it's a very classy beautiful travel handbag but again here super big super boxy i am so tiny i feel like i'm so tiny i don't know um it would have been for me and it cost way too much for the material you basically really pay for the name i i'm sure it's well made but then i would have gone uh lightly for the shoes actually the slingback the iconic dior slingback shoes just saying that's just my personal opinion and yeah that's it you guys those are my 10 handbags i considered but i'm glad i didn't buy and please again do not feel offended in case you have one of those handbags they are all very beautiful iconic handbags some of them are still very very popular some of them um, are maybe less popular nevertheless just buy and get whatever makes you happy and rock it absolutely and yeah i really really hope you enjoyed watching this video please let me know in the comment box below um what you think about those 10 handbags i mentioned or maybe just tell me which are yours um handbags that you may bought and send it back or maybe you know considered but happy you didn't buy it i'm so curious to know um your personal opinion and then actually i have i have another request guys i was thinking i'm not sure if that's something you would be interested in but i was thinking to do a video on Italian actually because I actually speak two languages um, at the same time you know I have two foreign how do you say I have two mother tongue I speak German or Swiss German and I also speak Italian and I was thinking in doing a video in Italian so please please let me know or thumbs up this video um, in case you want to see a video in Italian and if you are interested then I'm glad to record one so that's it guys thank you again very much for watching and talk to you soon on my next video bye